Hello. As my uh, regular subscribers will know, I run an audio and video transfer business. And one of the things that started this business actually was this. This plus two particular video recorders. There was a Sanyo VTC M40 Beta Hi-Fi and a Sony EVS 9000E uh, Hi8 machine. I also had some Super VHS machines such as a Panasonic FS88. So I had a little collection there of decent video recorders, but this was my first video capture card. It's a Horpage PVR250, and this would uh, encode to MPEG2, which was ideal for use with uh, making up DVDs, which was the thing 20 years ago. I would also use uh, JVC DVD recorders, and I still have a few of those. This came with a remote control. Uh, which is kicking around somewhere. Uh, now, it has, usefully, S-video input uh, as well as composite, presumably, somewhere. One of these connectors would be composite and line-in. So I think the line-in probably is composite and audio. There's another connector port there. What's that for? Ah, so that'd be for the remote control receiver. Uh -huh. So that's needed for the remote. Interestingly, it's got a, uh, a, an empty LAN there, so there was an option for some uh, other uh, device. This also had uh, has a, a, a analog tuner, and it will have a, a NICAM uh, stereo decoder. But in America, there would have been a different uh, uh, stereo audio uh, decoder. This probably still works, but it's PCI only. Well, I've got one or two PCs that could run that, but it's 32-bit only and all my modern machines are 64-bit operating systems. So unfortunately we can't uh, demonstrate it. And MPEG-2, well, it wasn't ideal because it's not a very good format for editing. Uh, so even just cropping some, uh, you know, trimming up the clips could sometimes introduce lip sync errors, especially if the incoming video was corrupted. I didn't at the time have a time-based corrector to feed this later on. Uh, I did get a time-based corrector, and I've featured those before, the GTH ACE units. But uh, without a time-based corrector, there was a risk that if you had corrupted video um, or, or um, bad edits on the tape, that it could uh, cause this to uh, generate lip-sync errors. Uh, that never happened with the EVS 9000, because that has a digital time-based corrector. And later on, I got Super VHS machines, which have time-based correctors. But the uh, Panasonic NV-FS88 uh, doesn't, and neither, of course, did the Beta Hi-Fi. So that was a, a little look at uh, my first video capture card. And I just wanted to um, mention again this one that uh, I received recently, which is for... This isn't an analog capture card. This is um, digital. In the, This takes SDI and... Uh, this will capture to uh, very large files from uh, both standard definition and high definition. Um, so you can connect this, and I've demonstrated this in fact, uh, with uh, an HDCAM SR uh, high definition video recorder. Uh, and I demonstrated that on a particular machine. Uh, it was a little uh, PC that looks um, a bit like a Stormtrooper. Uh, and though it's complete coincidence, I'm sure. This was installed in that machine the other day when I switched it on. And uh, let me show you what happened. Just try to switch on this uh, old PC. And the power supply runs up, and there's 5 and 12 volts on it. But the disk drive access LED lights up only very dimly. And we have a red light on the motherboard, which is uh, marked CPU which I think means either the CPU is not running or there may be a power supply fault to the CPU. Now I've checked the power supply, all the voltages are good on that, so it's either the processor or the motherboard has failed on the PC that did have this card in it. That's a nuisance. Now I could build up a new PC, I'm perfectly capable of doing that, I've built quite a few of my PCs up, but actually it can make more sense to get one built and installed with Windows. Uh, there's very little difference in cost. In fact, it can be cheaper. 
So I've used a PC specialist before, so I'm having them build me a new PC of very high specification, much better suited to this sort of uh, capture. So I'm going to have a new computer uh, arrive shortly. The only thing I'm going to salvage from the old machine will be some of the physical hard disks. Uh, and then I'll insert this and, of course, have to connect up all this cabling to things like my HD Cam SR and other machines that use SDI, which includes uh, DVC Pro, DVC Pro HD, um, Digital Beta Cam, all those machines I can connect via these cables. But actually, a little bit difficult to use, to be honest, because, and I discussed this when we demonstrated the card, it's a bit of a nuisance having to connect these up to each individual video recorder. Really, there should be a better solution to uh, Special connect delivery. it. Oh, thank you. I wonder what's in this. Let's open it and have a look. Okay, the first thing I see is a multi-way cable, which is the same multi-way cable as this capture card requires. Okay, this looks like the original packaging. Well, we have the uh, rack mount um, AJA breakout box. This is extremely useful. So, the other end of the multi-way cable goes to this. We have SDI 1234 connectors there and HDMI out. These are the audio connectors. So, we have up to eight channels in and out, HDMI out again, SDI again, YUV out for a monitor, reference looper, well I won't be needing that particular one, and LTC timecode, and analog audio, and a uh, connector for the remote control of something such as the HD Cam SR or DigiBeta. So that is going to make connecting up uh, that, that card hugely more convenient because I can just plug and unplug whichever video recorder I'm working with directly onto this instead of having to unplug the cables from the back of each video recorder and move them around. That is certainly going to be used even though I don't have a 19-inch uh, rack to mount it in. Um, oh, I think I can remove the ears actually so I could uh, possibly take those off. But it looks like there may be some more goodies in this box. That's uh, just an HDMI cable to go with this, brand new, high speed. Another set of the um, audio cables. Another HDMI cable. A SATA drive bay. Complete with a, <laughs> a solid state drive. That is absolutely amazing. <laughs> I love that design as well. So when you open it, it releases the SATA disk. And when you close it, it connects it up again. So you can leave this permanently connected. That's a really cool design. I love that. Another of the same. Absolutely wonderful. Is it really another Kona 4 SDI card? Absolutely wonderful collection. I'm not uh, certain which machine I'm going to uh, fit this one into. I may have to buy yet another new PC to make best use of it. That's a fantastic collection of equipment that I will uh, make very great use of when I'm using um, my professional equipment. Well we have our lovely new PC specialist uh, PC arrived here uh, which we're going to uh, build up and install the um, SDI capture card but we may have hit a problem. Let's uh, switch it on at the mains and then you see the there's some RGB lighting on the motherboard itself actually and then press the power button and everything seemed to work for a fleeting second and stopped and we've got RGB lighting on the memory which means it's gone into standby mode but uh, no other activity 
which is bad. But I found I can make it work. It's a bit dark, but if I reseat these connectors, like there's the power supply connector here, and just give it all a good wiggle. And now try it again. It's run up. So there's a contact problem in here somewhere. And now, if I so much as uh, close the lid on the case, <laughs> it dies again. Goes back to standby condition. So we have a bad contact, bad power supply, some other connection issue. So it's presumably suffered in transit. That's a disappointment. Okay, so we have a delay of a week or two before we can set up the AJA Kona 4 with this uh, external uh, breakout box. And we'll get to play with that one later. Also something I need to play with is this amazing Sony monitor. It's quite unusual because the sheer depth of it uh, is such that my kids actually thought this was a CRT monitor, not a flat panel one, but it's designed to be able to stand on its own feet. So that's a professional grade monitor. We'll get to play with that one later as well. Do come by shortly and see me work on those and lots of other audio and video equipment. Bye for now.